do you consent to being recorded? I do. Accept. Okay. I consent to. Wait. Did it you didn't did, ask me. It didn't? No. Uh, it just is recording. I'm not fine with it. Uh, okay. As, as long as I have you, you know, on camera saying that, you have to ask, also hold up your ID that shows that you're 18 and you need to be like. Hold on. Let me get my social security card out. <laughs> Everybody write it down real quick. Let's see if people are, we, are starting to come in. Are we live? The, we oh. must be. It looks like 133 people. Yep, people are, are pouring in. Yay. Look at all the people. So nice. So Hello, we'll, people. Oh, is there a chat? Turn my happening. jacket on. Oh, there it is. Hello. We'll actually do intros in like two minutes just to give people time to come in. Just, just filter in. Just filter. I don't even drink and I have a drink. Mm -hmm. It's urine. That's right. And it's warm. <laughs> it's fresh and organic. You know what it is? It's an alcoholic apple cider because my husband likes these real dry ones because he's English and he's like, Ooh. and so I got this super dry one and it sort of tastes like just unhappy apple juice. I give mm -hmm. all the sweet goodness was taken out of the apple juice and it was just you were just left with the anger that's sort of what it tastes like so i am drinking what i drink on at every single event mm. um which is the uh cheapest it's like a malibu rum that is made by kenny chesney the country music star Ooh. it comes to shucks and uh and i they really should be sending me these for free at this point but i don't think it really matters because i'm pretty sure this was twenty dollars so um fancy wow a jug of country music rum right it's, does it it's, taste like america it does it tastes like like um dirt and shame and and it's way too sweet and uh yeah yeah it it tastes like regret and i love it yeah it's so good so this good is, mm, so cr it says it's crisp but i think crisp is just another word for angry I think so too. Let's see. And people it's are sort of like drinking apple cider vinegar. Oh, that's healthy. Don't do that. People want to drink. There's always like, do you want drinking vinegar? I'm like, that's not a thing. It is. I have some in there that my, my, uh, what is it called? Uh, doctor keeps telling me I should drink it. And it, it, I think I was like, I think it's gone bad, but I, I don't think you can tell because it tastes awful. It's vinegar. It's just vinegar. Don't drink it's vinegar. Do you put vinegar in your clothes? Are we supposed to? I don't know. I think I'm the only person who does that. I always feel like my clothes smell weird when I take them out of the washing machine. And so my mom was like, if you put vinegar in there, it does it and it's better. So I have this big thing of vinegar and every single time I just like pour, it smells pour like pickles. Yeah, I like pickles. So yeah, I'm sure it's great because vinegar does everything. Vinegar is just one of those things it just does everything. It does. But don't it's drink it because that's toxic. gross. Exactly. Okay. Looks like, okay. Everybody has now gotten into the lobby. So yay. So first of all, um, welcome everybody oh, to our um, oh, fantastic, yep. uh, very Victorian. Um, yep. This is our, uh, our, this is our version of Halloween. Maureen mm -hmm. and I are, we're just going to talk about horror and murder and ghosts and we're going to drink and we're going to hang out and um, yeah, it's going to be ridiculous. That looks so good. I love it. Also, yeah. I will say um, Maureen's uh, camera every once in a while, do you see how it like loses focus? Here's what it's doing. It is auto-focusing, but it is not auto-focusing on her. I'd like to think there's a ghost in her part. So whenever she gets blurry, I say, we drink. Um, and if you don't drink alcohol, just drink water. And then you're actually like really healthy and hydrated. So that's totally- or vinegar. Okay. Just to yeah. have yourself a base with a vinegar. <laughs> just a vinegar yes. chip. It's I'll just have a drink of vinegar. It's <laughs> yum. <laughs> It burns. It's not good for you. No. Oh, kombucha. Oh, gross. The first time I drank kombucha, I said, who did this? 
I I smelled it once and I thought it was a mistake. It is like drinking sadness. It is uncomfortable. It is, it is, you know, when you were in college and you would leave your drinks on the side of your, Mm. and then later, like months later, you'd look and there was stuff in it. Um, And I say college, but really it's still happening to me now. Sure. Um, But, but yeah. Oh, can someone set the video to gallery instead of speaker? Uh, If you look, if you go up on the top and click on it, you should be able to, because I just clicked on gallery and it should work. Okay. So Wait, how was I going to start? Okay, so the first thing that I was going to talk about is um, I wanted to ask, uh, because so we would do these like Fantastic Strangelings book club questions, and it feels like I should ask you one of those questions just because that's how we start every event. And that first question is, two weeks into the zombie apocalypse, where would you be? Okay, first of all, thank you for asking. Um, The best scene of any zombie movie and the ones I am obsessed with is the scene where everybody is having that one brief window where things are going kind of well. It's only about half a day long and they go to the store and they only have 15 minutes to run in and out and kind of supermarket sweep it. But for all of their supplies, this to me is a dream come true. Um, it reminds me of my favorite uh, assignment I ever did in grade school, which was we had to make a like we had to make this book. When I say book, it's like paper stapled together. But it was we had a budget and we had to survive on this budget and by cutting. Now you would just look on the internet for stuff, but it was like cutting things out of catalogs and being like, I would buy this this camping stove and then I this rope and this chicken and like I was so obsessed with this. All I did night and day was pour over catalogs and grocery circulars and be like, chicken is down. Whoa, I could buy a propane tank. And then I would cut out picture by night. I was like getting up pictures of propane tanks. I was like, and for my survival bunker, oh, I'm gonna get a ventriloquist doll. You know, like, and I'll, I just, I love those scenes. I am obsessed with the scene where they go. And I was like, what would I get? Would I get medicine first or canned food? or water or anyway. So I am ideally in the store or organizing the stuff I got from the store yes. and planning my next raid. So did you do, I have never figured out if this was just a me thing or if everybody did this. My grandparents had those old, um, those Sears wish catalogs. Sure. And so I would open them up and I would be like, okay, you can only have one thing from every spread. And I would just be like, I mean, I would spend hours looking and being like, oh my God, how do I just pick that one thing? Even though I would never get any of the right. stuff. Right. Yeah. Was that, did you do that? No. I just poured over it constantly. It, to, to anyone that's not 500 years old, this would be like just constantly looking at the internet for stuff. So like basically what you do anyway. Yes, yes. Except yeah. all the ones that my grandparents had were from, the like very early 70s so Mm. all of the toys were not even toys that existed they were like the the charlie ventriloquist dummy and like and i'd be like this is what i really want and they're like that does not exist anymore like Mm -hmm. that's not even a thing and i'm like oh you know what i really like is communism and they're like no that no none of that so you can't have that it was a disappointing christmas we didn't get communism that year so that was so Let's talk about murder. Okay. Uh, right? Because like I'm always I, ready. Right. I, I know that we are both um, murderinos and um, fascinated with the dark. Why do you think it is that we like the dark and horror and true crime? And um, I, so as a kid, I definitely remember, because this is always a, a subgroup of this, is the obsession with cults. Yeah, And I feel like there was a lot of talk of cults in the late 70s through the 80s. It was like, hey, you hang out too long, you're going to get sucked into a cult. And I was like, ah, I wish. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I would join a cult tomorrow if it was the right cult. Like, they don't even have to offer me that much. It's like, if, it's like relatively chill. 
and there's fairly good vegetarian food and I get to live in a yurt, I'm like, fine, I'll go. Like, as long as I don't, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It seems fine with me. So yeah. I feel like cults are a great gateway. Um, I just picked up a murder mystery when I was about four years old. I read a little Hound of the Baskervilles and I just got obsessed and it, it never stopped. Like it just, that was it for me. And then I just read every Agatha Christie I could get my hands on, like two a day. Uh, I was a, a Poirot fangirl because what 11 year old doesn't love 70 year old <laughs> Belgian detectives? <laughs> You know I, I mean? did, and I couldn't pronounce the name correctly. So for my entire life, I was like, Periot, you know, Periot. Yeah, good old Periot. Oh, uh, even worse. I was actually obsessed with Hastings, who's an idiot and is not even in all the stories and doesn't know anything. So I'm like, I, what I want to do is meet an a idiotic English person someday who doesn't know nothing. And you know what, reader? I did and I married him. And now I'm living my dream. <laughs> Maybe he can start the cult. I think we should be in a cult. Oh, this I would a start cult. a cult with you. I would be in a cult with you now, like tonight. I would just do it. We but, all want to be in a cult. Don't we it, all want to be in a cult? Yes. It, every, everything is sort of decided for you. Yes. No books. decision fatigue. Oh None. my God. Okay. Just if you're watching it, you're in our cult. Yes. Come on. Just tell us where to play our tambourine and I'm fine <laughs> with it. Oh my God. I'm so good at the triangle. Did you yes. play the triangle? Oh, I was so good at it. Oh my God. I love everybody in the chat. Cult, cult, cult. Yeah. Yay. They're good, right? I mean, oh, not good. They're bad. bad but no, cult. That's right. Because we are going to buy that and start it. So, so let's talk about one of my very favorite things. True ghost stories or true murder story. Do you have any like true? Did, have you ever like seen a ghost or murdered someone? have i seen a murder look okay. if i saw a murder i'd look i'm not gonna talk about it okay <laughs> not important don't even worry about it don't worry about it cult. it's fine it's fine it's, you're you uh, have to tell you have to tell us stuff so we can blackmail you later so actually this is perfect i when i first moved to new york i had no like i moved up with my stuff and my friends we all sublet an apartment and i was like i'm gonna get a job tomorrow and so I got really drunk the first night. It was Fleet Week. And we went to a Haunted Mansion theme restaurant. And I was like, I was drunk. I'm going to work at this restaurant. And this is going to be my job. And I walked up. I was like, will you hire me? And they said, we're having a hiring thing tomorrow. And I was like, I'll see you tomorrow then, good sir. And I made up that night a resume full of lies. Because the only way you can get a job as a waiter or waitress in New York is to have a ton of experience. Even if you, so you just have to say you have experience. So I did, I was like, yeah, I got all this experience. I have so much experience. And they're like, great. And they hired me. And so I was the waitress at a haunted house theme restaurant. That is which, fantastic. Yeah, it was called the Jekyll and Hyde Club. It only recently closed down. It was four stories. Actually it was six stories because the upper two stories were extremely shady staff headquarters and a room of, of microphone and like video cameras, mm -hmm. everything in that place was rigged. <laughs> so all the things could see you and talk to you. Mm -hmm. And it would like, they would interact with you. But really what we use that shift for was to watch customers. So we would be like, these people on Trable's 40, like I would go up to the bar on the table on like say the third floor and there was a skeleton behind that named Skippy. And I'd be like, Skippy. And Skippy would come to life and be like, yeah, what's up? And I'd be like, those people on 37 are totally fucking me over. Can you go like have put eyes on them? And they're like, no problem. And then Skippy would go dark. Then the rhinoceros on the second floor would like come to life and look at the table and then it would turn around and then it would come back and they'd be like, okay, here's the deal. They don't like the appetizers. And then, so anyway, I worked <laughs> in an actual haunted house, but we, we, oh, look who's here. Little miss, I'm gonna knock everything over. My dog has arrived. I would like a cameo, please. All of this is about to get knocked over. All of it, a hundred percent of it. And she's gonna start barking. Oh, that's it's okay. over. That's my dog is nuts. I she's love bananas. It. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, so I've been to that the Jekyll before um, the pandemic. I went there, and it was like the Rainforest Cafe, but like with like Dracula's. Nice. And 
I was thinking it was going to be like a real, like a, like you, we'd do a seance. And, and then I walked in and I was like, this is not, it was cool. It was like a kitschy, you know, but it was not what I was. You probably went to the little one in the village. It did not have four stories for sure. Oh th- yeah. This one used to be on Central Park South. It was huge. It had a Frankenstein's monster that would come, would be lowered down six floors twice a day and smoke machines would go off and living statue. It was huge. And it was absolutely full of cocaine, apparently, like every surface concealed cocaine. And apparently there was like a major cocaine ring running out of it, which I knew nothing about. I, I never saw it, but everyone's like, well, we just steal tons of cocaine out of this restaurant, of course. I was like, do we? Is that a thing? They're like, oh yeah, this is like a major cocaine hub. It's like, sure, why not? Like, I'm here to sell fries to confused tourists who are sitting next to skeletons. And apparently what you do is sell cocaine fine like we all have to have things that we do (laughs) new york thing i could imagine walls and walls full of cocaine and yeah it was so shady the whole place was shady in very very dangerous working conditions they used to have us keep our stuff in body bags like actual body bags as a joke well it was funny until someone fell through the floor oh my god like dying it was very no, it just fell through the floor. Oh. But we had a lot of rats. They were probably high on cocaine. Like, I don't know. Oh my God. I, it probably makes them hungrier. I, guess I, don't, so. I don't know what cocaine does. I, I assume it's like pot, but stronger. So it makes you hungrier. I oh. think it just makes you talk a lot and want to open up a restaurant. That's what I've heard. Oh, okay. That's why I've never opened up a restaurant. I, the only it, time I ever did cocaine was accidentally um, because it was in it was in a joint and nobody told me. And I was just like, this tastes awful. Why do I have a headache? I feel so bad and I want to write stuff. And they were like, you know, there's cocaine in that. I was like, oh, I see. Um, and then I learned like, you can't trust people. So uh, you did yeah. learn. Mm-hmm. I think if you do cocaine, you just become a member of Fleetwood Mac. Uh, or you like write a lot of books. Like every, it feels like, like all like, Stephen King, it felt like every month he was coming out with a new book and it was all, I don't know, just every once in a while, I think maybe I should, but then I don't. Yeah. See, I'm very pure. I'm like, I've never even seen it. Apparently I was surrounded by piles and piles and piles of it, like something out of Scarface or something, but I never saw it because I was busy like, do you want fries with that? (laughs) And there everyone's like, (laughs) I'm like, okay, I'll get your wings. Do you want to see a monster? And yeah. A cocoa puff. A cocoa puff is a joint laced with cocaine. Thank you, Amber. I did not know that. Look at me. I'm learning about drug culture. Oh, this is so helpful. Um, so you've never seen a ghost then? I mean, no. I'm not, a, I don't believe in ghosts. Like you don't believe in them because they can't exist or you just haven't seen one yet? Um, you know, I guess if I saw one, I'd be like, well, you look at that. (laughs) I really wish Victor was here and he could like put a a sheet on and like walk behind me. Um, I wrote a whole series about ghosts. Like I was, I watched every single ghost hunting show. I went all these ghost tours. I did. I I tried so hard. I was like, but you know what? They always are. They're always an orb, always an orb or a cold spot in the room. Oh my God. The orbs are everywhere. No, it, it, same. Orbs. I go to all of the ghost hunting places. I go to every haunted hotel all over. A- every place we stay, any place we go, it's got to be haunted. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's always a little bit depressing. Although I have seen a ghost, but just like, just for like a second. And it was not in a like the place that you would expect to see one but the um i did recently get this uh what was it texas highways or texas monthly or some texas magazine uh, reached out to me recently and they were like hey you should write an essay for us and i was like i don't want to oh but texas monthly is a great magazine yeah i don't think it is i think i think it was texas i think it was it was it's texas something is it like Texas fuck nuts, like a much lesser <laughs> yeah, magazine? My, oh my God, that's what it is. So Texas fuck nuts was like, we want right. you to write an essay um, for our magazine. And I was like, eh. but then I thought, I wonder if I could use that to like break into like abandoned haunted places 
And then I could be like, I'm a member of the press. And so then I was like, could I do this? And they were like, I, I mean, I guess so. We could, I mean, I'm not gonna say that you should do it, but maybe. So, um, so yeah, so I was gonna break into this um, haunted bathhouse that has that was abandoned. It was like super creepy that I've always wanted to go to. And then I just looked it up and somebody bought it and like restored it. And now it's all like, fancy ruins and I'm like that's not what I want I want to go in where there's like snakes and there's you know people have written stuff and you think it's blood but it's not blood and like makes, makes me sad I know I hate when people ruin nice trashy things by putting up like shiplap or whatever that shit is they show on HGTV where they're like I put up a barn door or yes. whatever yes 100 percent so so I had um, wait, what was I gonna, I have my little, I have my little, little notes here of, okay, so since you do not have a ghost story. I know, I'm so terrible. I mean, I just, <sighs> I know, I'm, it's fine. I'm to myself. You know what though? That actually is very preferable compared to the people who are like, oh, I see ghosts all the time. I'm like, fuck off, Karen. No, you don't. You absolutely do not. Um, I went to a haunted grade school my grade school or so it was said because our it was in a old mansion on the Delaware River I'm and sorry, it what? I went to a grade school that was in an old mansion for real that is insane I, yeah I went there for nine years from the time I was four until the time I was 13 and it had been the home of all these fancy Philadelphia families and the um the British army encamped there during the Revolutionary War and everyone's like this place is haunted as fuck and i was like really like even as a kid i was like eh, i don't think so and um they were like oh and there's the spirit and our our team was called the spirits um because oh we had God. ghosts oh no we were like five years old and they fully let us because the 70s like the 70s and 80s they would just let kids do anything they were like hey kids you want to drive a semi and do a bunch of math and they'd be like sure so they used to let us walk to the river by ourselves. The Delaware River, which is a major, major, like it is a big deal ass river. And we, they're like, oh, just walk through those reeds. And then, the, and then we had two crypts on the property. We had two full ass crypts. Like there was the a family gang? crypt for the family. Yeah, there were crypts. Um, the gang? In the woods. It gained? The gang? Gang? Yeah, like the, the bloods and the crypts. Oh, the, no, 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 crypt, Psst. like the crypt keeper, like spooky, wow. like, okay, yeah. got it, like the two and the, right. yeah, we had a literal family crypt on the grounds that we would walk to, we did a Halloween sleepover, we slept over on Halloween, and we would walk to the crypt in the dark, this is what we did. Okay, this is the reason why you never saw ghosts, is because you tuned them out, you were like, uh-uh, too oh, much. Whatever. I don't have time for you, ghosts, I'm too busy trying to read all these Agatha Christie's. I got a thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, I went to school in a barn. You got to go to like some gothic fucking haunted mansion school. Okay, well, I'm officially jealous. And they were like revolutionary war ghosts. And I was like, I don't think so. Like I, wow. Okay, well, I'm gonna I... go, I'm gonna go accidentally fall in the river and die. I'm five, like, <laughs> you know, it's, they used to let us play in the fireplaces and in the chimney. For real. Who even has a chimney in a school? If it's an old mansion, you have chimneys. Well, I guess so. This doesn't seem real. There if were fireplaces book, in all I would the rooms. Be like, no, I don't believe this. Yeah, there what? were fireplaces in all the rooms and we would like stick our heads in the chimney and be like, hey, we're in a chimney. How we didn't die, I don't know. I Well, maybe some of you did and you just didn't realize it. All of those, those kids were probably ghosts. That place probably didn't even fucking exist, Maureen. This was just Listen. all, it was a whole ghost mansion. Listen, let me, let, this is what it was like back then. I, I have so many stories about all my bus drivers, all my creepy bus drivers, but just like this one from third grade. I had a bus driver, this woman who was like, I like it when little kids squeeze behind the safety bar. Forget, forget say seat belts. I didn't even have to sit in a seat. She had me squeeze behind the safety bar between like up behind her seat where she was driving to rub her shoulders while she was driving. That's what she liked. She was like, my shoulders are so tight. I'm a cranky lady, rub my shoulders. 
third grader. And I was standing there when our bus lost its brakes and went down a hill and crashed. And I got Jack, I was fine, but I got Jack knife over the seat. They're like, where were you, kid? I was like, I was behind, squeezed behind the rail. And what? this driver's seat. Rubbing, the, rubbing the driver. Yeah, rubbing the driver. Everything about that is terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not even my creepiest bus driver. Okay, start. I want to hear that one. Okay, so I have two other bus drivers. There was one, the old guy, when I was like in first or second grade, who had a thing. He had totally like a boner for this lady who worked at the McDonald's. So every morning he would take us to McDonald's and park there and just go inside McDonald's and leave us <laughs> in the bus so he could flirt like at senior citizens coffee hour. And he would just like fuck off and leave us. And we were like, we have to get to school. And he's like, I gotta go. I got you guys an orange juice and an egg McMuffin. Um, but then in high school, my bus driver kept asking me out and someone over, my teacher overheard me complaining about this. And then he got in trouble, but he didn't get fired. No, he just ripped out my seat. <laughs> well, cause you were supposed to be standing behind him, rubbing him, obviously. I listen. Uh don't rub your bus driver if you're going to get in a crash. Everybody knows it. Yo, the 90s were a, a strange time, you know? I'm from Philadelphia. Like, that's why I don't even care about ghosts. I'm like, these living people are far scarier. My bus driver needs her shoulders rubbed. It's, my bus driver took my seat out. I had stuck in a chimney. Like, what am I... <laughs> I want this to be a whole book. And I love I love that McDonald's is thrown in there because that's such a bizarro. Everything else is like 1800s Victorian. And then you're like, I'd like an egg McMuffin, please. So yeah. That's, that's, yeah, no. He just leave us. He would absolutely just leave us. I was in multiple bus crashes. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I was in multiple bus crashes. <laughs> That is crazy. It just kept, it, it's Philadelphia. Buses just crash and everyone's fine with it. Oh my God. It's just, everyone's fine with it. It's okay. just fine. This is why you never found a ghost because your life was already scary enough. And whereas for the rest of us, we're living in boringness and nothing's my, ever happening. I had a terrible Philadelphia family. My aunt was so terrible that her bird committed suicide. Like that is. Start again. What? So, okay. So I had this Aunt Clara and Uncle Jerry. They hated each other for 40 years to the point where she would only stay in her bedroom and she had a refrigerator installed in there. So she wouldn't come downstairs to look at him. And mm -hmm. she did it just a couple things, which was she would listen to conspiracy radio. She collected money in clear peanut butter jars and she would invite me over to count her money. And she smoked constantly. She was a smoker's rights activist. And so she would just sit on her bed and smoke and collect and have me count her dirty coins and be like, kid, just count my coins for me. <laughs> I'm going to make coffee in my room because your uncle Jerry's a racist, which he was. So that's fair. He was a dirty racist. He was a bad man. I didn't like him at the time. Then she had this bird, cockatiel. So this greasy bird, it was a cockatiel named Teal. Bird hated life because my aunt would just smoke at him all day and play conspiracy radio. I'm like, Teal. <sighs> And he got so mad, he just flew against the count of the cabinets in the kitchen until he died. And she's like, Teal killed himself. Go count my money. So anyway, once for my birthday, she gave me an empty peanut butter jar so I could just put money in and watch it grow. Because she didn't believe in banks. <laughs> she just believed in keeping money in your dark closet in a jar. Well, I mean, that that is a... I have a lot of family members who do that too. But sure. there was a the additional, yeah. No, they would hide it in their um, refrigerators, though. Sure. That makes yeah. more sense, at least. Well, can, I think because it's cold, and so, like, stuff doesn't grow on it or something. Uh, Peanut yeah. butter jars. <laughs> Peanut butter jars. This oh, was... you don't like my smoke? You don't like my smoke? <laughs> I'm eight. <laughs> How much peanut butter was she going through? These people, let me tell you something. When I stayed at their house overnight, which was frequent, I used to sit and watch Lawrence Welk with them and sew Barbie outfits out of the scraps from my Aunt Fanny's fabric scrap bag. And I didn't know how to sew, so they all looked like shit. We would sit there and over dinner, which was always like fried food with French fries on paper plates, which they immediately threw away. Then dessert was a full quarter of a Mrs. Smith's pie 
and a full quarter of a half gallon of ice cream. So you would get a quarter of a pie with a quarter slice of a half gallon of ice cream every night as dessert. You just brought back to me the mm -hmm. most nostalgic memory of being at my grandparents' house and also making the Barbie, Barbie clothes out of the, the scraps. And their um, dessert was they had this big tub, literally of peanut butter. And I always, in my head, I thought it was Peter Pan, but it is not Peter Pan. And I've looked everywhere to try to find what this peanut butter was. It was like super, super, super creamy. And they would put it in the refrigerator. Skippy. Eat it. it wasn't Skippy though. I've, I've tried mm -hmm. all of them. Peter Pan. It's I not did. Peter Pan. It's not Skippy. It's not Peter Pan. It's like, it's, it's creamier. It almost tastes like, like peanut butter ice cream. Like I mm. almost think maybe it was one of those things that was just in our local, you know, kind of thing. But you and you and everybody would just get around it and everybody would just get a spoon and you just eat it until you were sick, literally. And then I call my parents because I was sick and yeah. They come at oh, you. Oh, Kroger. That's yes. There were dinosaurs on the tub. Oh my God. Was it Kroger? There you go. <gasps> I'm going to write this down because I'm going to forget it later. Maybe I can find the Kroger peanut butter. Yes. You just got a tub of it. Be like, just like old times. It was so good. It was so good. And sometimes my grandmother would like put uh, sugar on your hands and then you'd put the peanut butter in your hand and you just make a ball and you just eat it. It was like, like a snow cone, but instead it was peanut butter and it was a, yeah, what, what, that's why I'm pre-diabetic. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so when I was growing up, there was this house next to us that was abandoned. And in my mind, I was like, for sure, this is a haunted house because it, you know, had been abandoned for, for, you know, before I was born. And it was one of those houses where like you would, I would sneak in and all of the stuff was still on the table. Like to me, I was like, somebody left in a hurry because the ghost came in and right. my, mom, she, my mom was like, they just got evicted. Um, <laughs> But, but forever I was like, that, that house is haunted. And, um, and I was absolutely certain of it. And then um, I heard this, like this urban legend that was going around our school, which was that there was this uh, black panther that was hanging around in our neighborhood because of course, rural Texas, black panthers, that goes together. And uh, in my head, I have this memory of this black panther living inside the haunted house. And I'm Sure, that's probably not true. Probably uh, not true. But it makes me wonder if there are, because I remember telling my sister, and my sister was like, you, you absolutely told me that was true. I was like, I remember it being true. I was not fucking with you. Like, I remember. Um, do you have any memories like that? That later- I thought my aunt was a member of the Supremes. <laughs> Wait, the same aunt? No, it's very different aunt. I thought she was in the Supremes. Why? I don't know. I thought she looked like I, I had there was a there was a picture of Diana Ross. I was like, oh, that's my aunt. Obviously. No, it wasn't. She was not in the Supremes. Well, that's a disappointment. <laughs> but for a long time I was like, oh, and the oh, she wasn't in the Supremes. She wasn't in the Supremes. That's not a thing. So that's not a thing. So I want to talk about, so we talked a little bit about books and like the books that got us into it. Um, for me, it was like scary stories to tell in the dark was, you know, like, like first grady, you know, kind of stuff. And then by third grade, it was all the Stephen King and um, Pet Cemetery. I think was the first really scary. I think that was third grade. And what was that? That's Dexy. Dexy, that was Dexy too needs loud. To come, in. come here, come here, touch. Come in, you've been requested. Come on, you've been requested. Come on, come on, come on. Just, just, <laughs> this is look. Come here, come here, come here. Come to me. This is all I'm getting. All my cats are coming. They're like, is she talking come to here. us? Come here, come She's here. Not. I'm sorry. Come here, Dexy. Come here. She's not coming. She's just gonna sit there and stare at me. Well, you you've brought this one. So oh, say hi to Ferris Mueller. 
Ferris Bueller, how are you? Do you want to wear something for Halloween? Here, let's No, proceed. not really. I hate costumes. Yeah, he really does. But but look, it's Halloween. We're all dressed up. You can wear this. Hold on, let me throw something in Oscar's head. Hey, Oscar. Hey, Oscar. Dexie has been requested. Can you coax her in this direction? My long suffering husband, my long suffering English husband. He's so good. He's everybody, so... everybody should get their animals and, uh, and you know, put, put themselves in front of the laptop and we can all get pictures oh, together. We can oh, all get selfies is. of all of us with our baby. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, she, she's off. She's off. She's off. Because I moved her favorite ottoman. I'm just in the chair and she's like, but my ottoman's over there. So I need to lay over. Look at his face. He hates it so much. He doesn't love it. Do you he want me to take it off? He hates it. Oh, he's so me... unhappy. He's so sweet. Okay, here, we'll take it. Oh, you look so good though. That's better. You look so good. He's like, I got it. I don't know. I'm yeah. a good cat. Why is it that? Want to talk about this book? We should okay. talk about it. Here we go. Book. You want milk bone? Look, Dexy. Come on up. You gonna talk about books with me? Yeah. Come on, come on, come on up. All the way up, 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 up. You can do it. Oh, you're gonna lay down. Oh, you're. Oh, he's so good. There you oh go. my god. Sweet baby. Yes, good girl, Dex. All right, that's it. She's off. Okay, I'm happy. All right. Um. So let's talk about. Um, so first of all, love every single one of your books. Up um, to water. They're so good. Um, all of the, the Truly Devious, all of the Shades of London. By the way, um, any new Shades of London coming? You know, I get this question all the time. I know. And I wish I could answer it. And the answer it's one of those publishing, really annoying publishing answers where situate like the situation is outside of my control. Um, mm -hmm. But I will do it. It's just that currently the situation is outside of my sphere of control. And I've been trying to bring it into my sphere of control for what seems like 6,000 years. That makes sense. Can you send me the story? Hey, listen. <laughs> I'll just tell you. Okay. We'll just like hang out and you can just read it to me. I'll be mean, like, so here's what happens. <laughs> like, um, so, okay. So everything, everything you've ever done, absolutely love. So I was not surprised that your guide to not getting murdered in a quaint English village was absolutely phenomenal. If you have not already got this book, you should run, run, run and go get it. Because first of all, it's fantastic. Secondly, it is a wonderful uh, gift book um, that you can give to people if you want to not have them murdered. Um, and it shows that you care. And or because, it's a kind of veiled threat. It is. And I think that's lovely. Um, the uh, all of it is hysterical and fantastic. Um, but uh, one of my favorite, I don't laugh out loud. I do like the, the laugh on the inside where I'm like, ha oh, ha so clever. Oh. Um, and there were several times in here where I like literally like laughed out loud and Victor was like, what, what was that? Um, so my very, very favorite is when you are uh, describing the different rooms and architecture. And I'm just going to share with you, if you haven't read it yet, just this, uh, this one spread, the attic, good idea, save time, go right to the ghost part of the house. The basement, no one can drop a, a bust or vase on you here. There's nowhere lower to go, it must be safe. Wait, who turned the lights out? Hello, can anyone hear me? The kitchen, no. Um, it's so good, so fantastic. What made you come up with the idea? So I had written a book called Box in the Woods, which is a C.V. Bell mystery novel. And you know, when you write a book, sometimes they have you do articles for places. So. I did an article for a, a site called The Strand. No, sorry, it wasn't The Strand, it was Crime Reads. What am I talking about? I'm high, I'm high, I'm high on cocaine. Um, <laughs> I did an article for Crime Reads and I'd had this idea. It was one of those ideas that you're like, that's just a good idea. Cause I watch all those shows I read. Like there's none of them that I don't read or absorb. Also, 
as I will get to, my husband is basically from this village. So I had this idea that it's so easy to say get murdered in midsummer or St. Mary's Mead or whatever, that I would just write a guide to a little listicle for how not to do it. And this listicle like went viral. And then this editor called me and was like, do you want to do a whole book of it? I was like, okay. So, cause like, you can just call me up and I'll be like, okay. So um, the illustrator is my college boyfriend, Jay. Um, yes, he, who I moved to New York with and worked at the Haunted House restaurant. Um, he is a wonderful illustrator and children's book writer and also a, like a creative director at one of the two big, there's like these two um, firms that do all the Broadway advertising and art. And he's been a director at both of them. So like he works on every Broadway show. I don't think he sleeps, maybe he does cocaine, who knows. Um, yeah. But he did all the illustrations and they're amazing. And I, I was like, I just want Jay to illustrate it. And they were like, sure. And I was like, okay, well, let's do it. Um, but some of the things in there are taken directly from my English husband's actual background because he is from a small English village. And for example, when I first, first, he grew up in a forest in a small English village, literally in a forest, a place called the New Forest. There are wild ponies and they will steal your lunch. They just wander around the forest and they steal your food and they stick your, their head in the window of your car and they will take your sandwiches and it's incredibly beautiful and give you a ringworm. Thank you. I did get ringworm from a hot horse once. Um, but, okay, neither one of you are real. These are not real experiences that real people have. Your childhood, they're not. I've got, I have, I have so many questions. Also, did well, you get a hot horse? Yeah, it was the hottest day ever, like in England or something. It, it was like some oh, like crazy... temperature hot. Yeah, it was like a, it wasn't like hey, you know, it was like it's a hot horse. Like it was just like a sweaty hot horse with covered in flies and stuff. And his her name is Rainbow, and it was one of his family's horses. And I was like, hey, Rainbow, how are you? And then I was like, boy, I'm real itchy. And I got like a, like a ringworm from it. Like it's just a like a gross fungus. I was touching some hot horse, you know, like. And then I was like. And then I got ringworm and then I had to go like oh, ringworm and they're like, we have just the thing for you. Put this lotion on you filthy bitch. And I was like, okay. And then I rubbed it all over myself. So, um, but when, so he's like, I will walk you down the beautiful shaded path to where my parents are, help keep this beautiful 12th century church. And I was like, or whatever, maybe it's 13th century. I don't know. It's tiny. It's old. It's like 4 million years old. And I was like, I saw little baby Shetlands that were this big. And I was like, look at those little tiny horses. And he's like, yeah, and over there is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. My parents take care of him. And I was like, what's that? And Sir oh, Arthur Gage? Conan Doyle is buried there. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. And his, they take care of his grave. It's right there out just outside the church grounds because they he's buried very slightly outside the church grounds. But wait, why is he outside? Was he because he at? was a spiritualist. Oh. And he couldn't be buried like in the actual church because they were like, you're not Christian enough for us. So like, you have to be buried five feet outside the, the fence or whatever. So I was like, you live a ridiculous life. A horse once broke into their house on Christmas Eve. That's the thing that happened. <laughs> um, He's not okay. real. He's not real either. <laughs> He's absolutely not real. So so just like vicious horse muggings and and what canary suicides and a haunted okay i have yeah is this right is this really real yeah okay. they're always angry at the vicar my in-laws <laughs> they're all that's why there's so much stuff about the vicar in there because they're always in a feud with the vicar like 100 percent of the time they're like here's what the vicar did this week do vicars still exist i just i thought oh, they were yeah. like downtown abbey oh they absolutely exist and they are always like that fucking vicar. He wants to get a television for the church. And like one time there was a major rumble in the village over the size of the gravel on the church path. Uh -huh. Total real. Like these people were like, they will fuck you up over this 10 millimeter gravel. <laughs> that is so I was like, that's how I learned that the, that in the village it is a very cutthroat environment. <laughs> okay, well. I totally forgot what we were talking about before, so I'm going to uh, to change it to, have you ever had your fortune read successfully? Um, 
No, but I like to do cold readings myself. I accidentally got a reputation as a really good tarot card reader, but I would read with any deck, like like an Uno deck or a deck of children's flashcards or whatever. And people like, you're really good. I was like, oh no, I'm just cold reading. Like I am literally just cold reading here. But people were coming back to me two to three times for life advice and cry. I was doing it at a party and I was like, oh no. Oh, I've accidentally become like a, like a, they're like, what should I do with my career? I was like, do not listen to me. Do not listen to me. This is a deck of flashcards. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, but you just gave such good advice. I was like, oh. Okay, so I have a theory because, so I collect tarot cards. I have dozens of them. And um, I also do cold readings. And the only time that it ever works for me is if I, I can't use regular tarot cards, I have to use a transformation deck or regular playing cards. And, and same thing where people are like, oh my God, how's that? That's so, so accurate. And what I really think is happening is I think some people are just very, very empathetic and we can mm -hmm. kind of pick up. And so that's, to me, I'm like, okay, I'm holding this deck of cards, but I think really what I'm doing, cause they're like, you're so good. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I'm just using your yeah. like aura to be like, okay, this and this and this. So we're having a really good conversation and I'm actually listening to you. Exactly, exactly. Um, but I had, so I used to go all the time to, um, uh, fortune tellers and, and stuff, because I always thought like, that's such a fascinating thing. And it never worked. Um, except for this one time when I went to a psychic fair. And so when you go to a psychic fair, or at least the ones in Texas, um, you go in and you pay like $25 and you get to pick like three different psychics. They're in a big circle and you, and you'll, you'll see like the good ones, or they have like a really long line. And, um, and so there was this one lady and she didn't have anybody like, and I just felt bad for her. So I was like, okay, I'll go to this lady and she Cut was rate psychic. Yeah. Yeah. But she so she was a tea reader. Um, and so I was like, okay, read, read my what's it. And I was there with my fiance at the time and my best friend and I drink the tea and she looks at it and she was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, your fiance is cheating on you with your best friend. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And she was like, yep. And, and I was like, that's crazy. I could not wait to tell them about it. Um, totally fucking true. They absolutely were. And, and I was like, that's so crazy. And I wrote down all the stuff because she, and, and she was like, and you're a Capricorn and you're like, there was all the stuff that was real accurate. And then later when I told um, my sister about it and I was like, this lady was, she was so, so good. And she was like, she probably like, heard Shane and Sandy walking around talking about how they were going to like go have sex afterward and she was probably like that bitch is getting cheated on and so yeah but I um, want to think that you were sitting there talking to her and like they were right behind you like, uh, like making out fully like, making out your fiance and your best friend are they're that that he's cheating on you like just right there it, just turn it just turn like, it's right there it's right there and you're like it is right there it's right there in here you know Right? No, it's more it right. It is more. right there. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've ever like told the people who you think are like on your side and they're actually like cheating and then you joke about it and then they're like, that's crazy. Also, we need to go away for a little bit. Um, yeah. Did you kill him? I did not, but he did have a very sad life. Um, so I kind of feel like that's, I really, I really dodged a bullet that he, uh, he was at, uh, the January 6th in insurrection. So, oh, so that was nice. good. And, uh, his, his latest Facebook thing was something about waiting for the, um, the second coming, how he's real sure it's, it's right around the corner. So, um, I found out there's, did you know that there's a whole intersection of January 6th people and people that believe in Bigfoot? That sort of surprises me but I'm not sure that what apparently are, what are the polls that they're how do they figure that out so it is a thing where it's like Bigfoot truthers thought that Trump was going to be reinstated on May whatever right this is this is a subset of QAnon Bigfoot truthers so it is a very specific <laughs> subset this is not real no it's what? real this oh my god real. I'm writing it down right now and they thought that on the day that he was reinstated, 
whatever day that was in May, they were like, people went to Washington and they thought he was going to be reinstated. They thought that the minute he was reinstated, he would text every person in the United States proof of Bigfoot. <laughs> well, now I totally understand why they want him to come back then. I mean, like wow. he, like the president has a button. He's like, text all of the United States. And then all of us, all of our phones would ding like ding at the same time. And it would just be like, Bigfoot, there he is. So, so, so they were double disappointed. Okay, so somebody, somebody in the chat is saying, is that why people have those big Yeti cutouts in their yard? They are all over the place. Those Yeti, I don't know what that is either. The silhouette, uh, maybe it is. And maybe apparently the whole thing is they think that Bigfoot wants to mate with a human woman and make a big feet race. I could I could give you my source, but I'm not sure because the source is an author I know who has who know like someone in her life very close to her is dating this particular Bigfoot truther who was like I went to the May that I, they went to Washington on May whatever and was like waiting for the text for the Bigfoot that they have gone Bigfoot hunting multiple times. Oh my God! Okay, absolutely. So there's a whole okay. subset of like you know, QAnon plus Bigfoot. That is fascinating. And I want to watch that whole documentary. I'm going to go on like a real rabbit hole deep dive tonight. And it's your fault. I never understood the Bigfoot appeal. I'm like, it's just a big hairy thing. We have those. Like, like I th bears, I think like they're big hairy things. Like it's fine. Who cares? I think it's the idea that if there's something out there that has hidden for this long, then there's all, then there's still mystery in the world. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, the Loch Ness monster, like it's probably not real, but wouldn't it be nice if it was? Cause that means that maybe there could also be dinosaurs somewhere. And yeah. I'm from, you know, I'm from Philadelphia. I feel like that means that I, I feel like I've seen a lot. I'm like my, my friend, my family had friends with names like Stanky, you know, like, and just they would accidentally shoot each other and roll up on carpets and, and leave bodies in the garbage. Like that's a thing that we found out on Christmas once. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> what? why Christmas? I don't know. My uncle came over and was like one of his wives, fathers got angry and accidentally killed a guy with a hammer and then didn't know what to do with the body. So he wrapped it up in a carpet and he was like, just driving around Northeast Philadelphia, trying to figure out what to do with the body. And then he got, then he just kind of got confused and left it in someone's garbage. My he great got caught uncle, like within about five minutes. Well, yeah, my great uncle killed my great aunt with a hammer, but that was back like, cause there were super country. And so he was just like, no, 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 nobody's going to touch her. I'm going to bury her in the backyard. And he wouldn't let like my other great aunt showed up and she was like, I have to do her hair. And he was like, stay away from her and then chase them out. And then, yeah. And then later my grandfather actually it was my great great aunt because it was his aunt I don't know whatever um but my grandfather supposedly dug her up um mm. after the guy died because the guy on, on his deathbed he was like I did kill her with a actually and it was a hammer and a nail he put a nail and then hammered it while she was at the breakfast table and so he he dug her up to be like I wonder if that's really true and then the guy was like also I killed my dad and I started all these fires and so like he was like kind of a serial killer sure oh yeah, maybe was... texas and philadelphia i feel like there's more of a link here than i think there is like philadelphia think... might be the texas of the northeast <laughs> you know i always wondered so my sister and i we would do this count where we would be like how many dead people do we know um, and because when we were growing up, like, it just felt like, I mean, we're really small school, right? There's like 30 people in my graduating class, but there were like five kids that died in my school when I was, you know, growing up. So like, that's a lot of, that's a lot. it's a percentage wise, it's a lot. And when I, I got like outside of the country and, and Victor was like, I've never even been to a funeral. I was like, I can't even imagine, like you didn't have. What about all the drunk driving and the people getting beheaded and the and the pe nobody got murdered at your school nobody that is so weird to me 
And so my sister and I are sitting there and she was like, oh, remember our friend that died in the bathtub? Remember our friend that died? Remember her? And I mean, it's like dozens. Like the, I was counting, like I've kissed 12 people in my life and four of them are dead. And for a long time, I was like, oh, that's normal. And then I got older and I realized it's not normal. And now I think maybe I'm just bad luck. Um, I don't think you're bad luck. You don't think so? I think that they were like, we've had the best. Why have the rest? And then they just checked out. I think that is exactly what it is. That oh, is exactly no, my, oh, no. It gave me a little power flash. Hopefully this won't just go dark. Hopefully if not. it does, we will assume it's a ghost. Okay, so let's go, let's go to questions. I'm going to say my first three weeks of high school at Catholic school, and I was not Catholic, and it was a, all like a real eye opener to me. A nun died every week, and they used to put their the viewings they had we had a chapel and they would put them in the chapel for viewings and we had to go every week to sit in front of these bodies um and I was like is this high school like this is what every week is going to be like like we have to go and sit in front of like this is <laughs> it's the dead nun high school that's not yes they kept dying dead nun school and hot horse worm it was very hot there were a lot of flies like it was I was like really worried about how high school was gonna go I was like I really do not understand Catholicism but there is a lot of death <laughs> right and um, all the all these nuns clearly and not unfairly hate us so this is a this is doesn't bode well right okay so question the Q&A is open although we're so good we, I think we've answered all of these questions so if you have any extra ones you can put them in Q and A, and I do see one question, which is beheaded? Yes, um, because if you ride motorcycles uh, without helmets, um, your head comes off. That happened to two of my friends. So Oof. you should wear, wear the whole thing. Yeah, don't ride motorcycles. So, they're so dangerous. Oh my God, they're so dangerous. Everyone I know who's ever been like a serious motorcycle rider has been in an accident, like a big accident. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's what you do. You just keep riding until you have an accident and then you either live or you don't. And that's, yeah. So don't ride, like, don't, just don't. Like our advice is don't. Just don't. Don't. Right. You don't so have to. Were the nuns being murdered or they're just like natural causes? They were very old. Oh, okay. But, I mean, the, we had nuns that were actively working who were over 90. Wow. I yeah. guess you don't retire if you're a nun, you just oh. stay. You may go to the retirement home, like the, the retirement village, but like in general, you just keep going. So yeah, they live at the convent and it was it's terrifying. Let's I was see. Like, I do not understand this at all. <laughs> and this whole death thing is a real added wrinkle for me. Right. Um, okay. So Sarah asks, what was your least favorite toy as a kid? Um, least favorite toy, huh? Least favorite toy. I don't know. Um, that's a tough one. I got the game Mousetrap, and we couldn't figure out how to put it together. And I think I threw it across the room in disgust. Mm. I always it was really hard. Monopoly. Oh, like, really? I love. If it. Some, oh my god! Somebody pulls out Monopoly, I'm like, oh my god! I will. I, I love will, all board I, games. I'll really? play it. I'll play all. Ticket to Ride with you all day long. I'll play Clue. I'll play, like, I love well, anything except for Monopoly. I think just because it has so much to do with money and it makes me, like, sick. Like, oh. I'm just like, I'm going to lose everything. I hate Scrabble. I really hate Scrabble. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Oh, my God. Hang on a second. Wait, I'm, I'm going to trip over something. She's gone, you guys. <laughs> okay, so... This, these are all my Scrabble letters because I don't like to play with the rules. And so instead, um, we play this game where we drink and everybody gets two handfuls and then you can make up words with whatever the letters are, but they That's have to be made up words that are not real words. That's and then okay, I'll play that. It's fantastic, I love it. But you have to convince everybody that they are real words anyway. I love it. So if you come over, we can play. I'll play that. I just don't like the, I don't like crossword puzzles. Oh yeah. It freaks me out. Freaks me out, you guys. Freaks me out. 
Let's see, are, dun, 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 any chance of a truly devious book five anytime soon? I'm writing it right now. Yeah. It's coming out That's next year. Awesome. The cover's oh, done, the title's done. Like, um, we're gonna have a cover reveal at probably at some point. Like, it's all, it's totally in the pipeline. And I will tell you this much, it takes place in England. Fantastic. Um, and I will say, if you, um, if you wanna read uh, Box in the Woods, it is kind of a standalone. Um, please, because, yeah. Yes, yeah. So if you if you're like, oh, I just want to check it out and just see, Box in the Woods is a really good, uh, is a really good kind of jumping. But now on, they're all going to be standalones. So like, she's just a detective, so you can just pick them up, and they're just standalone novels. Love it. Um, are there signed copies of How Not to Get Murdered available? Um, I thought I sent book plates down, but you know what? I also have these beautiful prints that were created and signed by the artist Jay Cooper, who is in the chat. And I can send a whole bunch of them to Nowhere Bookshop. So if you go in and buy the book at Nowhere Bookshop, I will send the prints there and you can maybe just get a print like for free, like a actual fancy art print. And exactly. I will send some signed book plates as well. So go to and buy it from Nowhere and then maybe you'll get like a bonus piece of art in there. Love it's real it. fancy, you guys. It's like, it's really nice. Love it. Jay is uh, a real fancy guy. He's a fancy man. Is it true that the next Stevie Bell book will be set in England and will she encounter hot horses? It will be set in England. Uh, I don't know if she'll, it'll be in the fall. So she may not encounter hot horses. She may encounter like room temperature horses. I think that's fine. Um, are hot dog sandwiches? Yeah. I, I'm gonna say no. I think we're gonna disagree because my mom would always make hot dog sandwiches where she'd split them in half and then lay them down and you'd have the, and that's a hot dog sandwich? Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what my I'm answer is. I'm fine with it. Uh, could Trump be Bigfoot? I, I can't see him spending time in the woods. No. I don't no. think he's outdoorsy. I, I, I like Bigfoot, so I'm gonna say no. What yeah. was your, oh, this is a good one. What was your favorite Halloween costume? So my parent, my mother borrowed a costume from my friend Jenny next door who had one of those fancy homemade costumes because I like to box costumes and it was a skunk and they made me put this goddamn skunk costume on and it was a very, very good quality goddamn skunk costume and I hated it. And everyone's like, this way, Mr. Skunk. And I'm like, I'm a girl and I hate being a skunk. And they're like, oh, you're a skunk. And I got all this People like people treated me like I was a celebrity because I was dressed like a skunk and I was so mad about it. I was so <laughs> mad about the skunk costume that to this day I was like, I don't want to be a skunk. Oh my god, that's fantastic. I liked a basic ass box ass stinky plastic sweat behind the mask costume. I didn't like any of this homemade high quality nonsense. I like garbage plastic mass produced comes in a box. It's gross. <laughs> That's how I liked um, it. My mom made all of our costumes, but it was like, once she made it, that was your costume for as long as it took to grow out of it. So like you were a witch and you were a witch for four years and then you passed it down to your sister and then mm -hmm. she was a witch for four years. But there was one year when my mom was like, I'm gonna do something new. Y'all are gonna be uh, Raggedy Ann, both of you, because that I just bought it, you know, she just bought this like material and she was like, that's all I have. And so she made like these Raggedy Ann costumes and she made the, these wigs out of red crepe, like the mm. crepe paper. But we went out to, there's like a Halloween carnival like right next to my house and it started raining and the crepe paper just started melting. So I, it looked like blood. All, all the, it was the best. It Cause I didn't want, I wanted to be something scary. I was like, I want to be like a Dracula. I want to be, and she was like, you're Raggedy Ann. And I was like, I look like I've been murdered. That made me happy. Uh, let's see, leaving for the UK next week, I will be in the English countryside. Will the vicar kill me? Probably. Uh, Maureen, did you ever work at that grocery store meat department? Oh, Wait. the one at the beginning of the box in the woods? That's probably what they yes. mean. Yes. I worked at a deli counter. I worked at a Wawa in Philadelphia and 100% and also like a, I was a barista early on. And that's just like all customer services people like, do you have any cheese? And you're like, I'm at a cheese counter, dumb motherfucker. And they'd be like, okay, well, do you have cheddar? I'm like, I'm literally in front of a sign. This is cheddar. <laughs> do you have coffee? Yes, we have coffee, dumb fuck. Like, what do you think we do here? <laughs> People are just like, 
What do you have? What do you think we have? It was signed that lists all the shit that we carry here. You think you're entitled to my time because you don't, you don't all look at a sign? Okay, oh, you I'm sorry, let me. You're 100% gonna come work at the bookstore and I want you to be this Maureen. Yeah. Every time anybody asks you books. anything. <laughs> yeah, you dumb motherfucker, we got books. What do you wanna read? You read? Oh, you read. Okay, come on. Come on, Einstein. Oh, come on. Oh, we got the Librarian of Congress over here. What do you want? You want a book? You want a book? Okay. All right, let's pretend. Let's all pretend you want a book. Come on, I will be your bookseller. I will come down there. I will fight out there, Jenny, and I will be. Crying. Okay, no, that's going to happen, though. You, you're going to come and do this. Oh, Santa, someone needs a Dan Brown novel. Come this way. Oh, it's full of real historical fact, you know. Mm -hmm. The chapters are six sentences long, and it's all real. <laughs> there are lots of secrets inside of those pyramids inside of pyramids inside of pyramids inside of pyramids inside of pyramids. <laughs> Uh, did you ever play skip bow? I did lots of skip bow. Yeah. I played skip bow. Uh, are there any cool haunted libraries near where you, where you live? I wish. Well, I, I do live near the New York public library and I was offered right before COVID a tour of all the tunnels underneath. And I haven't been able to go because COVID, but I'm hoping that person is still there. So I could be like, can I go on the tour of the tunnels? I want to go. They may have left. Like, I don't know if they're still. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people have cleared out. Um, is Amy Carter's shoe nearby? No. That is a reference to says who. She has a shoe. She's obsessed with Joe Biden's balls. <laughs> Isn't. Um, did you ever read Trixie Belden's books? I know what did she write? I know that name. Why? Do, I can't. I'm trying to it's, place it. It's kind of like Nancy Drew, but not. It's like an older Nancy Drew, isn't it? My, I remember my mom had some. So is I, it I read called that. Trixie Belden or is the, because I, I was like, like, I know the name. Trixie um, Belden was like the girl that was in it. Was the girl in the series. Yeah, I think maybe, possibly, because the name sounds super familiar. Uh, is there going to be a moose in England? Probably not, but they're probably like a horse. What's your go to box? Well, yes. What's your go to book? I got a lot of books, man. <laughs> you guys, Maureen has never read a book. You do not ask her that question. I cannot, I cannot read. <laughs> it's quite a scam I've got going. <laughs> um, my go to book is anything by Ray Bradbury because he's my like comfort author. Um, does Stevie listen to My Favorite Murder? Of course she does. S-S-T-G-M. Uh, call your dad, you're in a cult. And it's this one. Um, would you co-write a book together? Very interesting question. An interesting question. Yeah, actually, um, funnily enough, I'm having a real hard time with writer's block and Maureen was like, maybe I can help you. Let's do some dumbass thing together. And I was like, yeah, let's totally, let's totally do something ridiculous. So maybe, maybe that, it may help. You'll, you'll have to promise you have to like, be like, we'll get it that way. Yeah. Cause that way we could be a publisher. It's like these people said they would get it. Right, exactly. Four people from our cult said they would really yeah. love it. <laughs> they said they wanted it. So <laughs> Um, let's see. I work at a haunted college library in New England. Oh, that's too far away. I wish I was cold. there. New England is old. We don't have anything old in Texas. Um, did anyone ever have any supernatural experiences around you that you could never explain at all? Uh, hmm. I, you know what? There's so much I can't explain, but that's just people being weird. <laughs> like I can't explain a lot of shit. <laughs> like, why is my dog barking? I don't fucking know. Do you, do you have neighbors who get mad about the dog? No, she, doesn't, she actually doesn't bark that much, to be fair to her, in her defense. In your defense, my little love. <laughs> yeah, are you my stinky girl? Yes, I know. Yes. I'm talking to oh, you're talking to mm. All right. I'm talking to my stinky girl. 
I'll be your stinky girl. Are you my stinky girl? Mm -hmm. That's why I always like, I call her my stinky girl because she is. I love it. Okay, let's see. Did we, wait, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Where's Dorothy Barker? Dorothy Barker is in a crate, in a bathroom, in a bedroom um, because nobody else is home. And when I'm on this, if she doesn't have somebody to be with, she goes crazy and barks and is completely insane. So I put her in with like all of her little stuffed animals. And so she's upstairs, like just relaxing for the moment. But in a minute, I'm gonna have to go take her out to go to the girl. Yes. Let's see. Did we get to all of the que last question is, how is the bathroom situation, Maureen? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, so what happened was the other night, it was like four weeks ago, my friend Julie was staying over. Like nobody ever stays here because of COVID. But like my friend was staying here and she was in bed. We all went to bed early because we all had to wake up super early. And then there was a ringing at the doorbell at like ding, 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 10.30 PM, which is never happens. Like nobody just rings your bell. So I was like, I put on pants, like I come in and I was like, and there was a plumber there and he's like hey i'm here for you i i gotta come in i was like huh what and he's like there's a leak your bath are you running a bath or something there's a leak we gotta come in and i was like okay hold on so then i had to like run all around the house and like put pants on and be like someone's coming in they're coming through our bedroom and like they came in and they looked around and they're like ah it's your toilet we're gonna have to take your toilet and i was like so I went into Julie, I was like, knock, knock. Hey, Julie, real quick, just some plumbers are coming in. <laughs> and then we lost Maureen, right? Is the... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking haunted. The toilet was haunted. Ghosts took Maureen, ghosts and hot horses. Also, like we kept smarting like 12 minutes over we're supposed to, because I can't stop myself. Um, the, the story though about the plumbing, you actually you guys go to her Twitter and look up toilet and the whole thread is magic. Um, horror, but magic. Uh, so this is how we end on, you know, cliffhangers. And uh, so I just wanted to say thank you to Maureen who might be watching on a phone or possibly has passed out or maybe Dexty moved the computer, who knows? But I had a really good time. I hope that you guys had a really good time. Um, I know Ferris did not have a really good time, but that's okay. So if you haven't already, get your guide to not getting murdered in a quaint, in quaint English village. I can't speak properly. Um, it is very, very good. You will love it as much as you will love all of uh, Maureen's stuff because she is absolutely fantastic. So thank you for joining us. And look, it's it's we're over and y'all are still here. I love you guys so much. This is the best cult ever. If I could, I would send you all hot horses in the mail um, without worms. Probably, I don't know if they come with worms, um, but I will say um, thank you so much. And thank you, um, Vicki from Nowhere for staying late uh, to continue to do this. You guys are amazing. I love you. Mwah. Bye.